All right, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today on this video, what I'm going to talk about is gearing. A lot of people are, and the, the groups and forums I'm in always ask about obtaining a certain speed, how do I get more torque, you know, how do I get higher, uh, get into a better power band, all kinds of those questions. And this is a video that hopefully will help you understand gearing better, uh, help you calculate what your top speed is on your mini bike or go-kart or anything that uses chain drive with gears and I'll show you some math on here I'll get real technical on you but at the end I'll pretty much show you the basic equations that you can use and I'll also show you a web page uh, that you can pull up on your phone type in all the specs of what you got and you can kind of mess around with the numbers and it takes about two seconds to get you the information you need so let's go ahead and get started here and I'll show you um, all the technical aspects of gearing. All right, so there's a few reasons for uh, why you uh, change gearing, uh, modify gearing, add gearing to an engine by itself. And the main reasons are you either want to increase or decrease uh, your torque output. Um, you know, if you have a vehicle and you're trying to get up a hill or a mini bike or go-kart and you want to get up a hill and it's just not giving enough force to get it up there then you want to look at gearing it in what they call lower to get you more torque and um, if you're racing doing more street use and you just want more and more speed then there's gearing for that and you need to change the gearing for your to increase speed and also gearing I'm just throwing this out here that doesn't really apply to many bikes or um, go-karts is change of rotation um, you mostly see this if you have gears meshed together because uh, say this one turns clockwise it will cause one to turn counterclockwise but the main concern with the go-kart mini bike community is we want to change torque and speed and let me explain how this works uh, using an example of um, two circles all right so I got two circles here I got the one on the left that's smaller than the one on the right and we'll just say everything dimensional wise is one and we'll say this one is two okay and we've got the this will be our output shaft let's say of our motor um, this is your crankshaft whatever gears this is this is on your crankshaft just for um, for this purpose all right so two things change when you do gearing um, and like I said before, it's, it's torque and speed. So we'll look at speed right now. Um, speed, you have certain RPMs. Well, those RPMs translate to, you could say, inches per minute because of the surface, the perimeter here of how big that gear is, okay? And to know, and also know circumference. Okay, so circumference of a circle is simply pi, times D, 3.14 times the diameter. Okay, and I mean, it's the same equation for the bigger circle. So we'll say diameter is one again on this one, we'll say diameter is two on the bigger one here. And so, and then pi times D will be two pi on this side, and it'll just be a single pi on this one because one times pi is pi. All right, so we know, and actually you can just you know, divide out the pies here, and you got a one to two ratio difference, or a one to two ratio of the circumference. Okay. Well, so what that means? What does that mean? Um, that means look at the big, or just just think about this in your head. If this spins one time, you know, it's one half the distance of this one. Okay. So this circle, this input shaft will have to spin two times as much to get this to rotate one time, all right? So what that means is you're reducing your speed by the gear ratio, one to two, okay? So this was, so smaller to bigger reduces speed. Now what does that do to torque, okay? Well, torque is based upon force times radius and we'll say that this circle or your engine has, we'll say 100 foot-pounds. That's like a car engine. 
you know you're not putting that on your mini bike but just for number's sake let's just go with that so a hundred foot pounds so what that means is since this radius is one it's like a unit uh, thing here you're applying it's the same your engines outputting the same uh, amount of force as if you took a hundred pounds and pushed at a 90 degree angle one foot away from that shaft. Think of a torque wrench. You have one foot long torque wrench, you're applying 100 foot pounds. That's what that is. So now that we know if this one's rotating at 100 foot or 100 pounds is going this way, well, that same amount of force is acting on the circle uh, in that same point, except this, this one has a radius of two feet. Okay? So what does that mean? Well, if we're applying 100 foot or 100 pounds, at the outer edge of this circle then you convert that to torque feet uh, I'm sorry uh, force times the distance it's equal to 200 foot-pounds okay so what we've done by having a smaller gear to a larger gear we have increased our torque which is the reverse or what you could say inversely proportional to what the speed change was okay so let's talk about that and let's let's go to pulleys and belt system okay so all we're going to do is we're going to take these circles and we're going to spread them apart and i'll show you what the difference is all right so say so everything's identical instead of two circles meshing with each other um we're separating the two axles of these pulleys and we're going to put a belt on it the only difference in our equations or whatever that changed the only thing that's changing is the direction of rotation from your output. I'm sorry, your yeah, your output. So again, like on the first one, we were rotating clockwise. Well, with the circle connected at this point, cause that other circle to go counterclockwise. But with a belt, since these aren't moving this way, they're actually moving in sync. So with the belt, with these physically disconnected, both pulleys will rotate in the same direction as the input gear. Okay, all the equations are the same, the torque's the same, all those things. Smaller to larger decreases speed, increases torque. And if you flip that, if you go from here to here, this, let's say this is your engine and this is your tire, whatever you want to call it, your axle. So if you start out with power being transferred from here to here, you're decreasing torque by that same ratio, but you're increasing your top speed by the same ratio. Okay, let me move on. Let me change this up to make this into actual gears. All right, so I changed the system, and now it looks like gears it acts the exact same as a pulley system. The only difference is now you have teeth that keep less likely slip. Okay. Um, the you can do the same equations with this you can take the diameter and and do the difference um, but the cool thing about gears is because part on and gears the, this little I'm, I'm trying to blow you know this profile up here and draw this up but this isn't exactly right but anyway the pretend this is like an imaginary circle here around these teeth. This is called pitch diameter, okay? And that's essentially the diameter that you use for your calculations on this. Um, the distance to here to here is going to be the same as the distance on your uh, on your chain rollers, okay? So let's uh, Let's just say this is your chain roller here, okay? That's called just regular pitch, okay? On 420 chain, which comes on the Coleman CT200U, uh, I think that is a half an inch, okay? All right. Because that's, it's just a set number and all these teeth are the same, pretty much diameter, the diameter is proportional to your tooth count. So on gearing, 
You don't have to look at diameter. I mean, you can. I mean, it, 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 the math adds all the same. But you need to look at tooth count to figure out your gear ratio. And what I mean by that, so if this is the same chain pitch, we're using, say, 420 chain, let's say this is 50 teeth, 50 teeth, and this is 10 tooth, okay? So what we're doing here, we have a 5 to 1 gear ratio, okay? You take the um, you take the output gear, the last gear in the system, um, divided by the input gear. That gives you gear ratio. Okay, I'm, I'm with. It. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. Okay, so we have a five to one gear ratio. All right. So let's let me draw down your basic equations you're going to use. Okay, so. If you want to increase torque and decrease speed, then what you do is you increase the gear ratio, okay? Which means you go from smaller to larger. All right? Increased torque is always smaller to larger. Decrease in speed is always smaller to larger. Now, if you want to decrease your torque and increase how fast you know your vehicle goes, if, if it has enough power to get you up to that speed, what you want to do is you want to lower your gear ratio. And the way you do that is you go from uh, uh, bigger to smaller. All right. And the way and you, you have to change these these fractions around, it's not exactly that simple. Well, I mean, uh, it's it's not just that. So, actually, let me take a step back. Let, let me ignore that a little bit. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to increase gear ratio, you want to decrease gear ratio. So how, let's say we want to get more torque than what this system has. This is what comes off the jack shaft of a standard Coleman uh, CT200U. This sprocket is connected to your rear sprocket, which is a 50 tooth, okay? So this is a real life application here. Let's say we want to get more torque, okay? So we go to this little chart over here. I want more torque, how do I get that? Well, first of all, you need to recognize that you're gonna get less speed, okay? Unless power is your limiting factor. Let's increase our gear ratio. All right, so right now, our gear ratio, 50T divided by 10T. I'm not sure you can see that. Okay. All right. Equal five. Okay. Five to one. So we want to increase our gear ratio. Well, how do we do that? We need to make this ratio bigger, this fraction bigger. Okay. So how do we do that? Well, the way we do that is we increase the output. Um, let me make sure you can see that better. What we're doing is we're in, increasing the the final gear, or we decrease the um, input gear. We'll call that the the first gear. Okay. So let's say uh, by decreasing that. Okay. Let's say we take this to eight, eight tooth. We knock this down. Eight into fifty is six point two five to one. I think just double check it. Uh, 50 to my main. Yep, 6.25. 6.25 to 1. So we increased our gear ratio. So by just switching this sprocket down to eight t uh, an 8 tooth, we've increased torque, but we limited, we sacrificed our speed a little bit. Okay? Now, let's say, um, let me go back to the original here. There we go. All right, now let's say, you know, you got a vehicle and you feel like it's geared a little bit too low. You want a little bit, um, you want a little bit more speed. Well, actually, yeah, okay. Let's go with that. I want, I don't care. I got way too much torque, okay? It's almost scary. I'm popping wheelies all the time. I just want more speed. I don't want to do 25 miles an hour with my stock Coleman. I want to do 
30 miles an hour, okay? Well, what do we have to do? We have to lower our gear ratio. All right. All right, now we're at five. You know, let's take it down a notch. Let's see what we do. Okay, so to lower that, what we have to do is do reverse. Everything's all inversely proportional to everything. So instead of decreasing that number, the bottom, our initial gear, we have to increase it, okay? Increasing the front gear, you know, decreases your gear ratio. All right? So, <clears throat> so we change this to 12. Okay? So we increase this one. We're going to lower our gear ratio down to 4. Point, one, six, three, four, uh, one, one. 4.166, okay? Now, to get a similar result, we'll go back to normal here. You can um, decrease your top number, your final gear. All right, so let's take this down to 38, 38 tooth, okay? That gives you a gear ratio of 3.8 to 1, which is lower than 5. So we lowered our gear ratio, we got more torque now, and we got uh, faster speed. Okay, <clears throat> all right, so this is just the simple two gear um, system here, all right? What happens if you add another gear? Let's say, you know, what, what, what okay, you're Coleman. Boom, you got a, where's my clutch, okay. You get a clutch, you go from a 10 tooth here, you go to a 20 tooth here. Oh, I'm sorry, 10 tooth here, go to 20 tooth here. All right, same shaft, go from 10 to 50. All right, so let me. So you're gonna be dealing now with two. Let me go ahead and just raise this, get this out of the way here. So we're compounding. Changes to a 20. All right. So this is, oh, I'm sorry, leave that at 10. All right. I'm going to draw. So we got the gear from the, the rear axle to the jack shaft. Now I'm going to draw a separate diagram for the jack shaft back to the input shaft. Okay. So we got 10. It's a squiggly, ugly looking gear there. And we get 20. All right, so 20 tooth, and we got 10 tooth. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see that. Yeah, yeah, I think you can see it. Okay, chain, chain. Except these are uh, concentric right here. Okay, they got. So now we got two gear ratios. But what you have is you have a you have an overall final gear ratio when you look at these. Okay, so let's go back to our original jack shaft to rear. We have 50 over 10. We got 5 to 1. And here we got 20 T over 10. Again, take your your output gear uh, divided by your input gear. We got two to one, okay? So what gear ratio do we have all together? What you do is you multiply gear ratios, okay? So if we got two to one and we got five to one, multiply two times five, you get 10. So our overall gear to ratio is 10 to one. So what does that mean? Okay. That means if your engine is spinning at 4,000 RPMs, your axle is spinning, um, divide by 10, you're spinning at 400 RPMs. And so you can use all this to calculate what your speed's going to be. But anyway, going back to this, the same equations over here apply to both of these at the same time. So I can change just one gear out of this four gear system and change my torque and speed. Okay, so if I increase this gear, I get more torque. 
okay? Because it's at the end, it's on the output gear of a subsystem. If you change the output gear here, the 22, it acts the same as if you change this the exact same way, okay? So if I decided to go with a, Um, 35 tooth right here okay on this one if I change this to 35 what I've done now is I've changed this overall ratio to 3.5 to 1 alright this ratio stays the same 3.5 to 1 times 5 is 17.5 so overall now it's 17.5 one. Let me double check on. Jesus. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So what do we do here? We increase this. We've increased our gear ratio. We've increased our torque. Again, just the same as if we increase this one. All right. And the same thing applies to the other gear. If you make this one smaller, it increases your torque. Okay. If you make this one bigger, you decrease torque and in, in, uh, decrease torque, increase speed. Okay. Now. Now that we're talking about these, let's uh, let's do some equations. I'm going to do a crap load of math up here, and then at the very end, I'll show you the simple equations. And all you have to do, you don't even have to remember any of this, okay? All right, so let's do that. <laughs> 